This is Cybert signing into General's Evolution on the map DEFCON 6. But this time, not for a 3v3, instead for a 2v2v2. Kicking it off as our first player on our first team, playing the green, Demo GLA. This is Kyle. His teammate playing the pink, playing the China tank. This is Target Monkey. Making our way around to team number two, playing the purple USA Vanilla. This is King Mora. And playing his teammate as the minty green USA Laser. Give it up for K. Going for that Firebase or Patriot system right at the front door. Meanwhile, in the corner next to K, this is Cloud. Playing the blue vanilla USA and rounding it out as the yellow laser general this is cheesy butterfly going for an incredibly nice looking sim city right at the beginning of the game so it is left versus top right versus bottom right and that is how this divides up in this 2v2v2. A couple of Rock Vs are out. No eject here from King Mora. A little bit unfortunate for King Mora to lose all of those missile defenders inside of that Humvee as well. Airfield coming up 4K inside of his ally's base. So he will have that as a potential point to reinforce his ally if need be. Technicals coming in here for Kyle. He actually does manage to get a supply truck and completely disrupts the economy of his opponent. So he will kind of throw the early game for tar or for Cheesy Butterfly into disarray. Target Monkey, on the other hand, he got those couple of gats into his opponent's base, and then he is going into an airfield. Five more gats are positioned at the front line as well, so the potential of pushing back in. Meanwhile, on the south side, it is the USA Vanilla versus USA Laser with Cloud versus K. Cloud trying to go for the shared expansion between the two bases, and K is just not having any of that triple laser Humvee to shut that down. And this is going to be one of those games that uh, I think the support powers in the aircraft, like a lot of games on this map, will play a big, big factor. But honestly, this one, with being a 2v2v2 instead of a 3v3, could go so much more chaotic, so much more quickly. Laser goes down for just a couple of moments there. Low power mode for Cheesy Butterfly. That will allow Kyle Lorino to do a bit of damage to these Laser Patriots, but I don't think he'll be able to break in completely. Cloud even moving a couple of units in for response. Of course, Cloud with fast aircraft. Never a surprise to see that. We know all about Cloud and how much his aircraft are feared by general members of the Gen Evo community. You got to worry about Cloud and his aircraft. However, a couple of Comanches coming out from K. I guess these are laser Comanches because K is laser and he does have that extra firepower. No rocket buggies just yet, but if the rocket buggies ever come near those laser Comanches, they absolutely just light them up incredibly quickly. A couple of flak tanks are here but the lasers will be able to push back those flak tanks for now. Decent number of RPG troopers here as well from Kyle. So he's keeping his hopes alive with the use of infantry and vehicles. Couple of more laser Humvees from K. Pick up a couple of kills there against Cloud. K and Cloud, they seem to have a little bit of an agreement of like, look, we're not going to fight each other. We're not going to go hard at each other right from the beginning. We're going to focus ourselves elsewhere, and then maybe we'll meet up for a late game fight a little bit later on. But for the current moment, those two have an agreement to not fight each other directly. And instead, Cloud is going to push up north to help out Cheesy Butterfly in returning fire against Kyle. Raptors come in, snipe on whatever that was. Two Raptors do go down pretty much instantly there, courtesy of those flak tanks, which do have great anti-air range and do shred aircraft as quickly as quads do. Firebase gets called in here for Cloud. He's going to be building a defensive structure to help out his ally in dealing with the pressure from Kyle Arino. And Kyle Arino decides to reform his front line in the middle of the map with the help of target monkey they are going to be moving towards that center of the map position king mora maybe he finds some kind of an angle into a base here migs coming in 
Migs ignite a firestorm on top of pretty much everything. Only two Humvees survive. And with half HP, they look so sad and lonely. And on top of that, a rocket buggy is going to pick one of them off. Nope, it will be the Mig that gets the kill there with a bit of splash damage to eliminate both Humvees in one. So in this game, we actually have some representation from everyone in this game, but uh, only Target Monkey is representing China, and then basically uh, Kyle Reno represents GLA, and everyone else is USA in this particular game. Different flavors of USA. But for now, everyone is represented Oh, actually, I just realized if Kylo Reno and Target Monkey get eliminated, then it's just a four-way USA match. And uh, hopefully that doesn't happen right from the beginning. Hopefully we keep the variety until the end. And maybe one of the WSA teams can be the first to go so that we will be able to have that variety. Artie Strike gets called in, kills off one of the supply trucks. That can be such a disruption for any player at just about any stage of the game. But especially early on, those supply trucks are so important to keep up that eco. For current, for the current moment, King Mora has definitely enough economy to sustain a couple of supply truck losses. 12k in the bank, currently 60k total resources gathered. And Kyle was out of position. You can see his army moving back into position now to try and deal with Cheesy Butterfly, who has stepped into his base and is tearing it apart. Cheesy Butterfly is slow moving, though. So... Scorpion tanks, flak tanks, RPG troopers, and rocket buggies will be able to respond. Firestorm ignites on top of the reinforcements. Even a couple of scorpion tanks going to be eating those flames as the Crusaders get overwhelmed and these laser units will be annihilated. Cloud not really supporting this attack. One way or another, Cheesy Butterfly moved out without the help of his teammate and is paying the price for it. Target Monkey and Kyle Reno double teaming the defense there, managing to break down that attack without significant losses. Kyle Reno, however, is strapped for cash. He was basically the only player who wasn't floating massively at the start of that attack. And the result is Kyle Reno is uh, going to have a little bit of a difficult time rebuilding. Getting those supply trucks back up and running will take a couple of moments. Fortunately, he does have at least one black market there, cranking out that additional income. Everyone else. Else, I think has a decent amount of secondary income set up as well. Okay, no, no, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's only two or three uh, of these secondary income locations for each player. Never mind. Cloud adding on some additional ones, but we're late enough into the game that everyone should have at least one piece of secondary income, and we're seeing it again. These Chinook Avengers can be such a powerful combination in pretty much any stage of the game. They're expensive, but they're very mobile, and with those laser zaps in the right place, they can be extremely useful and extremely potent, especially in a 2v2v2 where you have to respond potentially to two different sides of the battle field at this at very close to the same time battlemaster mark two out on the map but so are four super weapons cloud and cheesy butterfly making good use of the fact that they are both usa calling in three particle cannons between that one single team kyle and target monkey on the other hand going to be a little bit less likely to get big super weapon numbers however they will have the opportunity to uh, potentially go that direction as the game goes on they just typically aren't as fast to super weapons as a usa player particle cannons have such a uh, such an appeal for all USA players and you know the cost of getting nukes and the scud storms is a little bit more prohibitive generally but we will probably see them MIGs come in MIGs will be able to clean up a couple of these particle tanks. Black Napalm has been finished as well, so all of those particle tanks going down. K actually almost driving into the Firestorm with an additional particle tank, and he's got this lovely line of Humvee defense on the left side guarding against Cloud, and Cloud is ready to rumble with a lot of Humvees of his own. Middle of the map will not be easily taken by any player, I would think. One Tunnel Network does survive, though, for Kyle, so he won't be pushed out by Cloud or by K. 
Warthog Strike comes in. One Oil Derrick gets eliminated. I mean, those Oil Derricks can survive very late into the game, but the faster you can eliminate your opponent's Oil Derricks, the better. I mean, sometimes we do even see particle cannons get used to eliminate those Oil Derricks just to stop that extra income from your opponent. Cheesy Butterfly, less than 30 seconds away on the first Particle Cannon. Cloud has added on additional Particle Cannons. Five Particle Cannons now on the team of Blue and Yellow. They are that combination, and we have our first Particle Cannon from King Mora now out on the field as well. And Warthog Strike returns fire courtesy of K. So Cloud gets a taste of his own medicine, but the first Particle Cannon is going to be ready very soon. So where will Cheesy Butterfly choose to use it? Could hold on to it for a defensive choice. Could choose to use it against one of his opponent's Particle Cannons if he thinks he can combo it with some other strike like a Warthog or a Fuel Air Bomb or a Carpet Bomb. Might be able to get a combo. Uh... Never mind, that was uh, that was a big nothing as Particle Cannon fires off on the other side of the map. It is going to be the Oil Derricks and the Airfields that get targeted down. The Burn will take out the second Airfield as well. So two Airfields, two Oil Derricks, courtesy of Cheesy Butterfly. And the first match has been lit to ignite the Super Weapon War of DEFCON 6. I mean, this map is not good for getting into your opponent's base. Oh, that is a lot of flak tanks that just got eliminated. Kyle was not paying attention and he let them all just sit there and take massive damage. So they all explode. 40 seconds until the next cheesy butterfly particle cannon. And then uh, it will be into Cloud and K. After that, their hands will be on those particle cannon buttons, the big red button. If they can press it and delete their opponents, they would be happy to break up this front door they might use that need the help of the particle cannon as well mix strike comes in but everything almost uh well okay no the uh, MiGs actually do survive. I thought the Avengers were going to zap them right out of the sky, but no, they do not get eliminated from the sky. They actually make it back home. Particle cannon moments away, and it's now six particle cannons versus two versus zero. Mix strike comes in. Black Napalm going to be stopping that from really uh, having any further advance, but particle cannon doesn't care about Black Napalm, and Target Monkey is ready to go. He's even scouting pretty deep with this heroic sentry gun. He can get pretty good vision deep into enemy territory, but he's firing it off in the south. Goes for the strategy center. Gets maybe a power plant as well. No. K is still here, and K now has a particle cannon of his own that he can fire off somewhere on the map. He might choose to return fire against Cheesy Butterfly, who has been tearing up that bottom right-hand corner team. Uh, Raptors on the deck. They go down. They get eliminated. The supply center as well will be torn apart. And then the firebase, the Patriot Laser, will survive that moment. But the return fire particle cannon will not be stopping here because Cloud has one ready to go and two more that are less than 45 seconds away. So Cloud could wait for all three of them to be timed up at the same moment and just lay waste to anything that is before his forces. He's got a couple of tomahawks. He's got a couple of paladins as well. He's moving into the middle of the map. Okay, he's got only one particle cannon. King Mora also only one particle cannon. It's really hard to stand up against a team who has six particle cannons between them with that kind of firepower. MiG shots land, but they don't actually ignite anything. No firestorm catches here. So it is going to be, well, that one will catch as the Humvees get eaten up. So does that Paladin. And the Flak Tanks will follow up from Kyle to try and find the kill on this army. But once again, Cloud has those three particle cannons in his back pocket. He can burn down his opponent's super weapons, or he can try and use it to light up an army like this column of of units that is moving towards his base. This is the team of the Chinooks, apparently. 
the team in the bottom right they are ready to go with their chinooks hoping well no gotta get away from those gats you can't you can't laser zap gats that is certainly not going to work at the meantime kyle he is going to commit into this attack but i don't think this is a very good idea unless he has some way to get up this hill some way to secure some damage against his opponent king bora's particle cannon now ready to go but cheesy butterfly is going to have a fresh particle cannon very very soon that'll be four particle cannons ready to go for our team on the left side they will have a massive amount of firepower at their disposal ready to go at a moment's notice king mora trying to find some kind of road in against his opponent and particle cannon will find the airfield not so many not so much the migs on the deck maybe one or two was there meanwhile on the south side of the map a return fire particle cannon fires off but that's not really what anyone should be worried about. GLA and China have had maybe a lot of time to build up, in particular Target Monkey, who we haven't been paying very much attention to, but who has a massive, massive number of units. Cloud is still sitting on his three particle cannons. He's actually had these ticked down to zero for so long that I'm not actually sure that it's worth it holding on to them that long. They would almost be ready to go again by the time he actually ends up using them. He could have gotten two uses by that same amount of time. Massive army is here for Target Monkey. Cloud, he could also just delete two of his opponent's particle cannons, especially if he's able to combo it with something. But uh, Anthrax Bomb lands in the middle of the map. Artie Strike as well comes in. Warthogs going for the kill. A number of particle tanks do survive 4K. And well, they're not going to survive for very long. Because there it is, courtesy of Cloud, I imagine. But uh, maybe it actually was from Cheesy Butterfly. He gets a number of particle tanks. And yeah, that was Cheesy Butterfly. That wasn't even Cloud. That was the laser particle cannon courtesy of the yellow player and he's got another one ready to go king mora ready to go as well with another particle cannon now in the mix demo rebel surprise will take down one of the particle cannons so now cloud only has two and uh he lost his opportunity to use that one but the demo rebel surprise is now gone red particle cannons are courtesy of the laser general king mora trying to push up the front door and that was one of the most cost effective firestorms i have ever seen in gen evo meanwhile on the south side it looks like a uh i don't know some kind of an airstrike came in there against that supply center possibly a uh arty strike getting called in king mora low on power unable to actually keep his stuff online cloud almost losing another particle cannon here potentially under threat there as cloud has uh still not activated any of his particle cannons i'm not sure what he's waiting for okay finally he uses it cleans up a number of chinooks gets the airfield as well and uh well purple is going to be calling in either a carpet bomb or a moab potentially on top of this army and he will catch a number of the tanks there those battlemaster mark twos don't last against a moab but this is still just so much firepower courtesy of target monkey so many china tank tanks out on the field cloud still with one particle cannon ready to go k with now three on the map but it is a massive fight for the high ground firestorm lands and can king mora actually hold on this is so many units coming up his ramp k will try and respond but he's getting caught in the middle courtesy of kyle who's moved his army in to help support this offense and it looks like king mora has been broken he's got a few units left but he is going to have to stop these tanks from rolling over his base cloud at the same time jumping on the opportunity to knock on the door of k and say hey what's up man we've been neighbors for a while but i've got a plate of poison cookies for you to eat and the result is target monkey is going to roll over mora although missile defenders are here cleaning up a good number of these overlord tanks even ranking up to heroic and knocking down these tanks one by one 
King Morris still has an economy behind this, still has enough tech behind this to survive. Second command center is there. Can and they survive the double flanked attack here? Cheesy Butterfly and Cloud joining forces accidentally with Kyle and Target Monkey to eliminate K and King Mora. Target Monkey's first wave has run out of steam, but he has got a second wave ready to go. And even without any super weapons, they are still walking up that front door, making it deep into enemy territory. Warthog strike back, War Factory gets eliminated. Kyle hasn't pushed into the base of K or King Mora. He could try and take this opportunity to move his forces in, but he's keeping them on defensive duty out in the middle of the map, worried that Cloud or Cheesy Butterfly will try and bring an attack when they are weak. So Kyle is on the defense for his team. Battlemaster Mark IIs don't have a good way to deal with aircraft, so those laser Comanches will have to be dealt with by the Gats. Eventually, they should get they should get eaten up. But uh, Target Monkey still hasn't managed to remove King Mora from the game. Finally, K's laser Comanches get eliminated. King Mora's chances of sticking around in this game seem slimmer and slimmer the longer that the match goes on. Particle Cannon fires off in the north, but it isn't enough to stop Kyle from continuing his, or uh, Target Monkey from continuing his attack. Kyle, on the other hand, is going to, you know, sustain a little bit of damage at home, but he's okay with that. He's got a decent enough income that he can recover even with sustaining that bit of damage. Target Monkey ready to go. It is, uh, it is incredibly difficult to end these games without super weapons or support powers, and we've seen Ty Kyle and Target Monkey not actually build any super, power super weapons just yet, and their support power usage hasn't been particularly active either. Just wave upon wave of units, pure macro leading to victory for the GLA China team. I mean, when you are China tank, you do have really good tanks, and that is one advantage that you have. Warthog Strike comes in, but it misses basically everything. And the laser from the sky, the defensive laser particle cannon will fire off, catches a whole column of tanks as they make their way to the edge of the map. And this one particle tank is trying as he might to find a kill, but it'll be the laser from the sky that gets the real damage done, but it's just not enough. Target monkey might actually be stopped by the sieve structure, by the missile defenders that are inside of that. And it's gonna be low power mode for just a moment, 4K. King Mora, on the other hand, is falling apart. He needs constant guidance from K's particle cannons to light up the night and to give him hope in this fight. But even so, King Mora's main base is pretty much desolate. He has got very little left and well, okay, I guess this is why we're not seeing a lot of those support powers used on the right side because Kyle and Target Monkey have been using them on the left side, using them offensively against the team on the left, Cloud and Cheesy Butterfly to keep them off of their back. Cloud has somewhat given up attacking K. It's come down to just this constant push from Target Monkey into the base of King Mora. And K, keeping King Mora in this game in more ways than one. King Mora is uh, almost completely gone, but well, I guess his main base is literally empty of any King Mora buildings. And that is now two players with the base of one player and uh, K does have a couple of buildings here in the southern corner of the map. Target Monkey has found so much space though to breathe and oh, no Firestorm Ignites there. So just a couple of those particle tanks do go down. Cloud once again with three particle cannons ready to go. Moab comes in, Carpet Bomb comes in, and Cheesy Butterfly says it is time to end this game. We'll see if K or if Cloud is able to support this attack this time. Cheesy Butterfly stepping into the base of Kyle 
And will he actually find the kill here? Oh, the particle cannon clipping the wings of a couple of those MiGs, and it means the Firestorm will not ignite. A couple of missile defenders going down, and Cloud now finding the targets that he would like to burn down with these particle cannons. I think it will be coming down to the team with the most particle cannons will actually win the game. But Target Monkey and Kyle Arino, at one point in this game, they had enough firepower to end any of the other teams on the map. They chose the team in the south. And as a result, the team in the West has burned them down, has taken the opportunity to go through the back door and try and knock the house down. Kyle and Target Monkey, their flank has been weakened. At the same time that they killed Mora, they were left exposed. Fuel air bomb, no EMP lands on a huge chunk of this army. So they are going to get a cleanup on almost all of the ground forces. Moab catches so much and it's gonna be another particle cannon that catches all of the MiGs trying to return to base. The tanks moving in to support and even the palace will go down. The burn, the afterburn will secure the kill on those buildings but it won't secure the kill on King Mora, who lives to fight another day with a triple, uh, with a triple command center and one supply drop zone. King Mora with less than 1,000 credits per minute of income is still in this game. He's got 10K in the bank. How does he have 10K in the bank? You'd think he would be spending it uh, and on more than just barracks units. I'm not sure that going just mass infantry is the right move here. He is trying to re-expand to his base. I don't know how well that is going to go. I am actually really surprised we have not seen a single nuke. We have not seen a single Scud Storm from our GLA China team. And they are continuing to try and actively fight this battle on two fronts. Kyle and Target Money Monkey, they have sat back at a couple of different points in this game. They've sat back and not taken an active role in this game. But once they started attacking, they really haven't stopped and they have been taking a beating back at home and on the front line. They have been going just about every direction, defending and attacking in the north and the south, the east and the west. And at the same time, taking so many shots from so many particle cannons, it's not even worth checking in on all of these particle cannons sometimes because there are just so many of them. And another one is firing off somewhere. Like, as that one is firing off, another timer finishes up, and now K has fired off three particle cannons, but I don't I have no idea where he even launched them off. Kyle is going to be gifting away a ton of technicals here, and it's going to be a dual, I don't know, Moab and fuel air bomb. It will be a fuel air bomb and a carpet bomb on top of this GLA base. The carpet bomb landing without much effect. Cheesy Butterfly going to be dropping his own carpet bomb and his own fuel air bomb to help clear up that middle of the map expansion for Kyle and Target Monkey. And meanwhile, King Mora has tried to start the rebuild process. K is really the one helping to rebuild this base and take that area over. But K is also the one who has actually a significant amount of income. Cloud leading the income, but in neck and neck with Target Monkey. They're both at like that plus 18K right now, 17, 19 in that range. And both of them with absolutely massive economies this game. Cloud reforming his front line, pretty much entirely Paladin tanks, joining up with cheesy butterflies, laser units to potentially retake the middle of the map. Cloud and Cheesy Butterfly have wanted to get rid of Kyle and Target Monkey from the middle of the map. We'll see if they're actually able to do it or not. They've almost pushed into the middle. I mean, those support powers did a good job of weakening the buildings to be cleaned up. And the combination of double carpet bomb, double fuel air bomb did a pretty good job of cleaning everything up. Anthrax, though, on top of Cloud. And there we have our first nuke of the game. And is that a second nuke coming up as well? Yes, it is, courtesy of Target Monkey. 
It is kind of 1.5 versus 1.5 versus 2 at this point in the game. Cloud and Cheesy Butterfly have done such a good job of rebuilding after every attack comes through because they have taken some damage, but they have just done such an amazing job of rebuilding and holding everything off. Part of that is that K and, and uh, King Mora were more focused on the top right-hand corner of the map than they were on knocking down Cloud. And so the result is this fuel air bomb is going to be a big whiff. A big hit and a miss pretty much there for K. Unfortunately, he did not catch the entirety of Cloud's army as it walked up the hill. And instead, he will have to burn this army down kind of unit by unit as it arrives onto the high ground. But it's going to be a particle cannon finding one, two, three, and maybe even four power plants. He gets number... No, he doesn't get number five. The afterburn is not enough to knock it down, but it's going to be a permanent low power mode, it seems like, 4K, because as much as he has kept himself in the game and kept King Mora in the game, I don't think he can withstand the double team of Target Monkey Kyle Arino, Cloud, and Cheesy Butterfly K by himself is not able to sustain himself against four players teamed up against him seemingly although kyle really isn't playing much of a participation in this attack it really is target monkey and cloud being the brunt of that and cheesy butterfly getting in a couple of shots here or there and uh which of these particle cannons is it uh, he doesn't get to fire. No, he does fire it off. Oh, okay. So that is what happens when a particle cannon gets deleted from the map as it is firing off. You get to see it start and then not actually land. And that's a lot of dead tanks once again, but it's just not enough to stop the bleeding. I guess everyone could just take a pause. They could all just say, you know what? We actually don't. EMP lands. Uh, we actually don't want to kill off K. We want to give him some time to rebuild. And K is a very resilient individual. He's got 13 grand in the bank, so he does always have that hope of a comeback. As long as he has an MCV, he has a hope of a comeback. And Target Monkey has actually changed directions with his parade push of units. Cloud, on the other hand, has an absolutely massive army of chopper of chopper v's and of paladin tanks the sky and the ground belong to cloud as he washes over the middle of the map and target monkey like i said he actually changed targets and is no longer going for k so as long as k has an mcv a command center which he does then he can sustain himself in this game he's down to 5k in the bank so he does have to be a little bit careful that he doesn't completely spend himself into oblivion but he does at least have one supply dock Cloud catches a lot of these reinforcements. Target Monkey will not be able to keep up the attack. Meanwhile, Artie Strike lands on the power plants, shutting down the power for this Laser General once again. Cheesy Butterfly has lost his power so, so many times. With, uh, with Laser General, it's a lot more important to keep that power online than basically with any other faction. Tank's going to be moving in, but they just don't shoot up, and there's not that many gats here, so the front line of tanks gets eviscerated by the air units of Cloud and well the Gats will be able to push away those Humvee chin hooks for now but uh, that won't be the end of the story Cloud will be able to rebuild his front line he will be able to rebuild his tank count and get ready to go again for another round okay hoping against hope that no one pays him any attention technically king mora is still in this game i don't think king mora has any remaining buildings other than this one uh that one supply drop zone so i don't know maybe king mora will leave the game at some point and gift his three or four grand over 2k as a little cash infusion goodbye but uh, at this point, King Mora has like one ranger out on the map and uh, not much more than that. Cloud moves into the middle, getting caught by these gats. That's a lot of gat cannons. You really can't just walk in there without a plan. You need something else going on. And now this army is engaged with targets. 
Once again, Cloud has two particle cannons ready to go, a third one 30 seconds away. Cheesy Butterfly also with two particle cannons. Well, not anymore. He's going to burn one of them on this nuclear missile, and he's going to need a second one to take down the nuclear missile entirely. No, nope, he gets it. He gets it, so that might actually have been a second, or it might have been comboed with something else. Cloud, on the other hand, with a line of sentry drones, will potentially get a kill on a command center here, stopping Kyle Arino's rebuilding efforts. They're not going to be as strong as they were. Particle cannon fires off. Maybe the laser particle cannon has enough firepower. Oh, no. There he ignites his second one on top of that nuke to really make sure that he gets the burn down. And uh, the second nuke will survive. Not as much damage done there by just the tail end of that last particle cannon. Mixed right comes in. Firestorm ignites. Low power mode. Gets the strategy center as well. Burns that down. Anthrax, on the other hand, on top of K's entire army. And, uh, well, that might be the end of these paladin tanks if they, or these crusaders, if they stick in that poison for too much longer. Uh, meanwhile, Particle Cannon fires off, takes out both of the oil derricks about 35 minutes into the game. And uh, there's still actually technically two oil derricks on the map. I just now realized that Cheesy Butterfly has never lost his oil derrick. So all this time in the game, and he still has control of those oil derricks. They haven't been eliminated with all the super weapons that have fired off. No one and support powers. No one has knocked down those oil derricks. King Mora has been defeated. He hands everything over to K, and K is once again just hoping that no one takes notice of him in the corner of the map. He's got his particle cannon ready to go, and honestly, I can't, it, I can't uh, fault him for not wanting to use it. Target Monkey trying to play two bases at once, trying to hold on to this game despite the fact that Kyle Arino has been functionally out of it for five or ten minutes now. Cloud, a difficult player for anyone to beat, and he and Cheesy Butterfly just created such an amazing position for themselves. Even gets the nuke on exit. Will lose a lot of Chinooks, but he's got 46k in the bank. He's got a particle cannon to burn as well. Actually, that's courtesy of Cheesy Butterfly. He will uh, burn down some of those gats, get a little bit of damage on that nuclear missile, and well, that is uh, that is the weak fighting the weaker there as Kyle goes for a sneak attack against K. Kyle has, uh, has actually rebuilt a decent amount. He's got a lot of engineers. I'm guessing he was gonna try and engineer cap his way back to victory. But uh, support power comes in. It's going to be a carpet bomb on top of that command center, on top of that power plant as well. Nuclear missile is still ticking down for target monkey, but there is just so many options for Cheesy Butterfly and Cloud to eliminate this nuke before it is ever able to fire off. Artie Strike comes in, knocks down the power for Cheesy Butterfly again but uh, only for a moment, or I guess EMP actually came in. Yeah, it was an EMP on top of that particle cannon. Meanwhile, Target Monkey is still, he's gonna try and fight this one out in a 1v2 situation. Bye-bye to the nuke, and actually a carp bomb for good measure? No, nope, I guess that was, uh, that was something else coming in there. Maybe it was in the middle of the map. Cloud has taken in the middle of the map. The latest player to attempt it, whether or not he'll be able to hold on to it is another matter. Moab lands from K and knocks down some of the defenses there. Again, at this point, I feel like K and Target Monkey just have to form an unholy alliance. They seem refusing, they seem like they're refusing to do that. K now going to be calling in a fuel air bomb. And uh, it might not actually land. Okay, yes, it does. It will land on top of those GAT cannons. But yeah, I mean, Cloud is the big hitter in this game. And Cheesy Butterfly is no slouch either. Cheesy Butterfly has been taking a lot of hits this game and is always bouncing back. And, uh, well, goodbye to the, <laughs> the engineer cap attempt by K. 
or by cloud k will lose his last particle cannon he has no more super weapons and everything in this valley ignites and burns with fire five seconds until the next particle cannon but less than a minute until four more particle cannons are ready so there are five particle cannons that could all be firing off over the course of the next minute we'll see how long cloud keeps his in his back pocket cloud reassessing k as an opponent and says oh uh, yeah i forgot that you were in this game let me go ahead and uh, knock down a couple more things as well particle cannon fires off somewhere on the map burns down a chunk of target monkey's base carpet bomb comes back as the counter attack and k still in this game still in this game k you know uh plus 11k in income that's that's a decent amount of income particle cannons fire off they will find a palace find a, i think a barracks as well and uh not much more than that but cloud has another particle cannon ready to go as well so he's fired off two he's got a third in his back pocket and the double usa team when they get these six particle cannons like that mammoth tank gets caught right as it steps out onto the map but doesn't get eliminated yeah this double usa team when they have six particle cannons the reset timer of four minutes is that doesn't feel very long when you have this many particle cannons being leveled against you a four minute reset timer doesn't feel like nearly long enough when you've got so many lasers from the sky just absolutely annihilating everything that you've got and I mean, this entire tank column could get lit up by Cloud and eliminated very safely. Cloud, on the other hand, banking 57 in the bank. He has got so much cash, plus 21k per minute for Cloud, plus 22k, 21k for Target Monkey. They're once again very even on the economy, but Cloud is the one with three particle cannons in their, under his control and six particle cannons on his team. So, very little contest there between Cloud and Target Monkey in terms of actual firepower that you can put out onto the battlefield. Another particle cannon fires off, targeting down the income of his opponent, trying to limit the tech and the income of Target Monkey, and well, the uh, the avenging Chinooks will show up in the back of the base. They're going to try and find an angle deep into enemy territory, and they have actually found a relatively limited anti-air position. And they are just going to fly over, knock down as much as they can. Now they're flying into a lot more gats. They're going to take a lot more damage and a lot more losses as Cloud tries to reform his frontline attack. He's sending a column of sentry drones across the map, a couple of mammoth tanks, a couple of paladins as well. His Chinooks leading the charge there as they cross the map. And everything else, Anthrax? Anthrax will land. Sentry drones, I don't think, care about anthrax at all. Just the uh, easy-breathing humans that have to deal with anthrax. Internet center being targeted down here. Once, uh, once these other forces show up, they should make short work of that internet center. Cloud still contesting with K there in the south. And particle cannons going to be ready to go in five seconds. And then, uh, you know, one more minute for a bunch more of them. And K, once again, rebuilding, always hoping to be left alone for a minute or two. I know you guys, a lot of you guys in the comments, you also never tire of the particle cannon. In particular, the super weapons general and the laser general because they are red and purple respectively. So it's... uh. I may have actually said that backwards. Laser is red, super weapon is purple, that's what I meant. And I know you guys never tire of seeing them e either. Segoro and Gunship Mark II, I'm not sure who did the particle cannon sound and look. Or maybe it was someone else on the Gen Evo team. But whoever it was, they did an absolutely phenomenal job. I love the engineer attempt, but it's just not going to be enough. Cloud is too well prepared for that. absolutely brutal amount of particle cannons firing off in this game defcon 6 it's not a particularly well designed map 
but it is a good map for insane explosive chaotic action and uh not a good map for anything else but we get to see a ton of super weapons cloud's got another one ready to go firestorm catches a big chunk of these units it is a slow bleed out moab man the moab in the right spot just does so much damage that's that's more than you would have been able to kill with a particle cannon or at the very least as much as you would have been able to kill with a particle cannon quite possibly more than you would have been able to kill with a particle cannon low power mode 4k he's still in this game and cloud is trying to force him out moab on top of the dozer on top of the war factory and k now has remarkably little left in this game two supply drop zones a power plant and i think that is it if he has a dozer that su survived then he is still in this game he absolutely still can make a comeback here fuel air bomb will not land and meanwhile uh supply or spy drone on overwatch taking a look inside of cloud's base and k says okay let's go I've got three buildings left. That is what is going to keep me in this game. And uh, everything else is crossing the map, and we're going to try and kick Cloud in the teeth. We'll see if it works. Of course, Cloud has two particle cannons ready to go, and a third one 20 seconds away, so he can burn down units as defense or knock down units as offense. Either way, he can burn down a lot with very little effort. Carpet Bomb comes in. Low power mode once again. Those flying Chinooks have found their target, and K has been defeated. One team is officially now out, lasting 45 minutes. Not having a whole lot to do for the last 30 of those minutes. This has turned into the cloud show showmanship hour. But uh, Cheesy Butterfly and Cloud becoming a powerful team together. And once again, the team with the most particle cannons seems to win the day. Triple particle cannon to finish us off. At least a sense of showmanship is here as the fuel air bomb ignites and these Humvee Chinooks will fly in. And at the last moment, we go out of sync. But honestly, I don't think that it really matters because that will do it for this game. Thank you all very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this crazy action. And this is Cyber signing out.